The countdown is on. In 36 days, Zulu will roll through the Big Easy, celebrating the start of Mardi Gras. But this year, the iconic parade will have a different look. Instead of going to Canal, the parade will now turn off St. Charles to Poydras, then turn back on Loyola and resume the normal route, all because of the Hard Rock Collapse site. The businesses on the detour are now preparing for big crowds. Yep, right here. Double our staff, that way we can accommodate everyone. We'll do an outside bar like a normal game day for us. Um, of course, making sure that we order enough product. But the business owners on Canal are already feeling the stress of not having the parade at their doorstep, saying they rely on Mardi Gras to drive in customers. Three weeks is going to cover like uh, two or three months. Three months is going to cover. Not this year. Not this year. Business owners say being near the Hard Rock has dropped foot traffic and sales dramatically. With a parade detour, they're anticipating even more financial woes. Now when it's cold, cold, and they buy a lot of stuff. You know, the cold stuff, hat, gloves, those kind of stuff. So this year, if they don't come this, this side, they're not going to buy. In New Orleans, Michael Vincenot, WDSU News. And as parade changes happen, we are making adjustments to our WDSU Parade Tracker app. There you can see this carnival season's complete schedule and every parade route. The app is free on all Apple and Android devices. An animal welfare group is criticizing the fairgrounds in New Orleans after four horses recently died at the horse racing facility. Animal Wellness Action Group, which is based out of Washington, D.C., says two horses have been euthanized and two others died from other causes all in an eight-day stretch this month between January 9th and January 17th. The group is in support of reforms in the sport through the Horse Racing Integrity Act. Today, experts weighed in on this situation. Accidents happen with animals and the weather's been particularly bad. It's been very warm and this, you know, the, the fairgrounds do a great job with the footing over there. They are one of the safest tracks in the country. So I have a problem with just because of the nature of the business, it accidents happen. And so there were four at once. I can't say there's something wrong with the racetrack. In a written statement, the fairground says at fairgrounds race course, we care deeply about the safety and well being of racehorses and do not take fatalities or injuries of any nature at our facility lightly. We have joined forces with industry leaders all over the country through the thoroughbred safety coalition to establish necessary reforms and implement the world's best practices for the care of racehorses. New at six, the Franklinton Police Department is looking for a gunman and a vehicle after a victim was shot outside of a home. The 20 year old victim remains in the hospital after the shooting yesterday in the 1900 block of Desmere Street. Investigators say the victim was shot after approaching a vehicle that pulled up in front of a home. Several people were outside and told investigators they witnessed someone in the vehicle fire shots and speed off. An autopsy is scheduled tomorrow for a Jefferson Parish teen who died in police custody. The 16 year old was arrested yesterday after investigators say he attacked his father inside of a business on Veterans Boulevard. The sheriff's office says when deputies were trying to detain the teen, he quote suffered an apparent medical emergency and became unresponsive. The boy later died at the hospital. Still to come on the news at six, Louisiana at the top of a new list, but it is not a good thing where Louisiana ranks when it comes to women in our state. Plus, a look at the prices at the pump that will be kind to your wallet and it could get even better.
Another inmate in Mississippi has died after he was found hanging inside the Mississippi State Penitentiary at Parchman. The prison has been the focus, uh, focus of recent deadly unrest. The coroner says officers found Gabriel Carmen hanging Saturday night. The officers reported earlier that Carmen was irate and throwing feces. Between December 29th and January 3rd, five inmates were killed and more injured in violence inside the prison that has posed a challenge to authorities. Well, a new report ranks Louisiana as the second worst state for women. The report is from Zipia.com and it finds our state is among the states to have the least economic opportunity for women and greatest financial disparity between men and women. The worst state was West Virginia, followed by Louisiana, followed by Oklahoma, Kentucky and Utah. Each state was ranked in four categories, percentage of women CEOs, percentage of women in poverty, Income, income gap, and life expectancy. All right, still to come, impeachment matters didn't pause for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. The latest development as we get closer to the opening statements in President Trump's impeachment trial in the Senate. And on this national holiday, we'll tell you how people here in New Orleans celebrated Dr. King's life, legacy, and dreams coming up in a live report. They have the volunteers that are here and they bring hope. Um, they bring a smile, they bring energy. As the nation celebrates the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., people all over the city are inspired by his legacy and they're rolling up their sleeves to serve. MLK Day has become known as a day on, not a day off, to encourage Americans to volunteer and improve their communities. WDSU's Casey Ferran shows us how people are living up to King's dreams. Casey. Hey, Travers and Gina. Yeah, we saw people all over the city today, young and old, celebrating King through acts of service and also an overall sense of togetherness. Uh, we saw today in Central City, there were a number of people who came out to start the day work with a commemorative celebration and remembrance walk. Hundreds of people lining MLK Boulevard 
as dozens of dance groups and bands from across the city entertain the crowds today. And then the King's Day celebration has also become a national day of service, as we know. And in the lower ninth ward, we found volunteers of all ages setting out to beautify their neighborhood. They spent the morning picking up trash and debris on vacant land and sidewalks there. Then in Algiers, more than 50 AmeriCorps members from across the U.S. are volunteering to help five homeowners, including Wanda and Urban Brumfield. Today, volunteers there planted flowers and herbs at their home, painted and built handrails and a ramp to make their home more handicap accessible. Whatever you can't do for yourself, that somebody comes along and do for you, it means you should be grateful, and I'm more than grateful. You cannot serve others and be the same. You become different when you serve. You become a better person, you become more connected to your community, um, and you become uh, more empathetic to others. And the Contemporary Arts Center also hosted an MLK Day event today called Woke Dream. It featured an art presentation as well as panel discussions from community leaders discussing Dr. King's legacy and highlighting the people, the role that artists play in keeping advancing activism and social justice alive. Reporting live in Central City, I'm Casey Ferran, WDSU News. Casey, thank you. WDSU partnered with the Blood Center for a day of service blood drive today in honor of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Dr. King Day is the only national holiday recognized as a day of service. The blood drive took place from 5 this morning until 3 this afternoon right outside our WDSU studios at Howard and Barone. The 40 donors today received a Mardi Gras t-shirt. Remember, each blood donation can save three lives. On the North Shore, crowds gathered at Reverend Peter Atkins Park in Covington for a day-long celebration. We hope everybody can see the significance of Martin Luther King's birthday and see what he was about and know this is for everybody. And this uh, don't, don't, don't make no difference about the color. The March for Peace parade was this morning. After the parade, the celebration continued with a fun day at the park. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell laid out the rules for President Donald Trump's Senate trial. McConnell will allot each side a total of 24 hours to present their arguments beginning Wednesday. This comes as House impeachment managers work today to prepare for the start of the trial tomorrow. The managers did a walkthrough of the Senate this morning, as you see here, crossing back across the Capitol. They viewed the Senate floor and their workspace. The group also met with Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Meantime, President Donald Trump's legal team filed a lengthy response to charges that he abused his office and obstructed Congress. It comes after a shorter document was filed on Saturday, laying out Trump's arguments against impeachment. Trump's lawyers were required to produce the comprehensive filing ahead of the trial. Today's brief is essentially a preview of the case Trump lawyers will make on the Senate floor. And get it while the getting's good. Gas prices in Louisiana are below the national average. That's according to AAA. The average price for regular unleaded gas in the states is $2.27, 28 cents lower than the national average. New Orleans average is in line with the states. Despite the prices are still a few, despite that prices are still a few cents higher than last month's. An expert with Gas Buddy says more declines are likely coming. It's beautiful out, but let me tell you, it's cold. Near 40 North Shore, near 50 in the metro, and our temperatures are going down. Here is a look. We've got freeze warnings in effect with low temperatures dropping into the mid-20s to the mid-30s, those low to the mid-30s right in the metro. And as you look to the south shore over by Homa to Bell Chase, it's looking like a freeze, but sunny and breezy tomorrow, a beautiful day. Heads up, your rain chances do go up on Thursday. So we've got this high pressure building in, and let me tell you, we have had a strong north wind today, and because of it, look at how that water was pushed on shore. At the lakefront at one point, winds gusting to 35 miles per hour. There you can see small craft advisories east of the river. But this is a look at where we've got the freeze warning in effect, and we're going to have to monitor the north shore, certainly the potential for eight hours of freezing temperatures. So pipes may become a concern. We'll have to monitor that. Here's 
there's that cold air that's moving in. It's really dry too. Big upper level low off the northwest that's helping to pump in moisture. That's a rainmaker as we go into your Thursday. You can see cold again tomorrow, upper 40s near 50, Wednesday mid 50s, Thursday we're warmer mid 60s. And we have our rain chances going up. I've actually bumped it up to a 70% chance. Here's our storm tracker. Gives you an idea of what's happening. So the weather right now looks really great, doesn't it? But what's going to happen over time is that that high pressure builds in. That allows the temperatures to drop. Then the high moves off to the east. We begin to pick up an onshore flow. The clouds increase as you go into Wednesday. Wednesday night seeing some rain chances. It would be light rain. Then here comes an area of low pressure moving our way with our rain chances increasing for your Thursday. Then it turns uh, nicer as you go into Friday. Here is a look at our high temperatures today. We got all the way up to 53. The low at the airport was 44. But wait, look at the North Shore. Much colder and you are going to be colder in the morning. Right now low for look now Bogalusa 39 degrees. I mean the these temperatures going down. That's why I, I am concerned for the North Shore. You will have to monitor that, particularly the northern portion for the potential for a hard freeze. Meanwhile, here we are at midnight temperatures going down by one o'clock. They are freezing in the morning until about seven, eight o'clock freezing as well. That's why you've got that eight hour potential. I've gone with mid to upper 20s North Shore, upper 20s South South Mississippi and then Homa to Bell Chase near 30 degrees. Here is a look at your forecast with the freeze warning until 9 o'clock tomorrow, midday, mid 40s, high temperatures, upper 40s to near 50 degrees. It's going to be a cold day tomorrow. There is a look at your forecast. Yes, you need your jacket and nice. You need your sunglasses too. So your forecast Wednesday, more clouds, rain chances Thursday. Let me tell you, the weather improves for Friday and looks great for the weekend. Back to average. All right, that's good news, Margaret. Coming up next in sports, former LSU defensive coordinator Dave Aranda was introduced as Baylor's head coach today. Don't miss his powerful words about his former boss, Ed Ogeron. And here's a look at what's coming up in primetime after the news at six. It's entertainment tonight, followed by America's Got Talent and Manifest. And of course, join us right back here for WDSU News at 10, followed by The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon.